gorgeous. Everyone here is beautiful in their own way. Now, when I talk about beauty, what do I exactly mean? Beauty is the qualities in a person that gives pleasure to the senses, mind, and spirit. This was the definition of beauty that Merriam-Webster defines it as. But to most people, we usually refer to beauty as physical beauty, or how we look. Now, beauty is a very interesting subject because while it differs from person to person, it is also considered as one of the most important factors in how a person judges you. That is because in more cases than one, it is how you look that makes the first impression. But while first impressions are important, they aren't everything. Good afternoon. My name is Supreme, a junior from RIS, and today I'm going to be sharing a tip with you guys that might change your life. Beauty standards exist everywhere. No matter where you go, your looks are going to be judged and tested. And today, I'm going to be telling you guys a story about a particular Sunday in the month of July 2019 where my looks were tested. At that time, I looked quite different from now. I was a middle schooler, and I loved to play video games like Roblox and Minecraft. And because of that, I didn't quite enjoy physical activity. But it was summer and I was getting bored, so I decided to try something new. I decided to try out dancing. So, in the heat of the moment, I booked the most popular dance class at the most popular school that I could find, and I went to the dance class. But since I've never really danced before in my life, you guys can probably imagine how much I sucked at it. And after a few classes of the teacher giving me weird looks, I decided that, hey, Maybe dancing just isn't it for me, you know? But then, something life-changing happened. On this one particular day, as I was coming out of the dance class and walking to the front desk, a middle-aged Korean woman walked up to me, and she introduced herself as the owner of the dance company. She asked me this question. Hey, Prem, we're having a collaboration with this Korean entertainment company. Would you be interested in auditioning for it? I was shocked. As a middle schooler who's never really touched grass before, this was such a big opportunity for me. And why did she choose me out of all people? Did she think I was special? At that time, I didn't realize that it was a marketing strategy, so I took her up on the offer. I mean, what's the harm, right? Little did I know, that audition was going to change how I viewed the world forever. And so after that day, I had the sudden aspiration of becoming a K-pop idol. I trained, danced, and practiced every single day. And several months came by, and the date of the, no, of the audition arrived. 29th November 2019. I was so excited, so ready to finally accomplish my dreams. This was my opportunity to go to Korea. But since you guys see me here and not in Korea, I think you know how it went. When the news hit that I didn't pass, I was devastated. Never in my 13 years of living had I experienced a rejection this strong. I felt like my dreams were short-lived, like this was the end of it. I was this close to succeeding, and now I have to go back to my normal life. I knew that I could probably go on more auditions and maybe I'd pass one of them. But with my current height and body structure, I felt like this was impossible. My assumption at that time was that I was rejected because I didn't match with the Korean judges' beauty standards. I didn't have the V-shaped jawline, the hourglass figure, or the triple eyelids that they wanted. I didn't look like those K-pop idols. Mind you, my training and exercising has made me improve my physical health lifestyle a lot compared to back then. But I was so drowned by the rejection that I couldn't think of anything else. But you know what the funny thing was? Even though I thought or made myself believe that I was sad, I didn't even cry. And that was because I came to realize that I had made a mistake. And that mistake wasn't in my dancing skills, or the way I looked, or my performance at the audition. It was in my mindset. 
My mindset at that time was that I couldn't become a K-pop idol because I didn't fit with the Korean judges' beauty standards. But before we talk more about my mindset and where I went wrong there, let's talk more about beauty standards because I said that word quite a lot. Most people believe beauty standards are this one definite thing, but they surely aren't. Beauty standards are ever-changing, and in every era of history, there is a new definition of beauty. So, let's dive into some history. How has our perception of what was considered beautiful changed throughout time? In ancient Egypt, beauty was when you were slim and symmetrical. In ancient China, beauty was when you were small. During the Renaissance era, beauty was when you had a voluptuous and full-figured body. During the Victorian era, beauty was when you had a tiny waist. In the 1920s, beauty was when you looked like a boy. And in the 1980s, beauty was when you were muscular. And as you can see, even in history, beauty standards change all the time. And not only do they, are they forever changing, they are also extremely unrealistic and ridiculous. And I don't even have to give you guys an example all the way back to ancient Egypt or the Renaissance era, because you can see these unrealistic beauty standards in our everyday lives, sometimes without even realizing. When you guys were young, have you ever played with these dolls? The Barbie doll is a prime example of society's unrealistic beauty standards. She may look like just a doll, but she's grown to become a toxic reflection of society's expectations. A standard of beauty that countless of young women and girls strive for. According to the Huffington Post 2011, if Barbie was a real woman, she would weigh 49 kilograms, be 175 centimeters tall, have 100 centimeters chest, and 100 centimeters hip. The probability of a real woman achieving that body shape is 1 in 100,000. And according to a psychological study conducted by Elizabeth Salafia on how playing with dolls affect body image, it was found that girls who played with dolls were more susceptible to developing body image issues and internalization of the thin ideal. But that's not all. 90% of women and girls who suffer from eating disorders are aged between 15 and 25. And this means that these girls most likely played with these Barbie dolls when they were younger, shortly before developing their disorder. But you guys know what the surprising thing is? Barbie didn't always look like this. Just from the 1950s till now, Barbie has gone through countless of adaptations, alterations, and changes, each representing a standard beauty of beauty of its time. This shows how a small and innocent looking doll like the Barbie can influence society's unrealistic standards of beauty this much. And it makes it impossible for a normal teenager like me or any one of us here to strive for these ridiculous and ever-changing standards of beauty. And that is where I made my mistake. I shouldn't have had the mindset that I had to always be striving for these standards of beauty, even with knowing that they are so ridiculous and that they are always changing. And this doesn't only apply to the beauty industry, but to everything else in general. Sometimes, we are so fixed to reaching for that one thing, whether it be wanting to become a K-pop idol or wanting to get that A in physics. We become tunnel vision. We get blinded by the bigger picture. And even worse, when an obstacle arises, our entire course of action stops in its tracks because we believe that that goal is the only way that we will ever succeed we become blinded to the opportunities outside of that. In reality, there are so many ways to reach a similar goal. So many pathways that we could have taken. Even though I was rejected by that K-pop audition, that did not mean that my path to become a K-pop idol was over. Actually, the most interesting thing happened following the rejection. It took some time of pondering and self-reflection before I came to realize something important. Although I was rejected by the audition, that did not mean that everything that I did before the audition or the audition itself was for nothing. Before I started dancing, I was a gamer, always stuck in her room, eating Krispy Kreme donuts and McDonald's ice cream. 
but now I was improving my body and physical lifestyle every single day. But that's not all. As I was waiting in line for the audition, I took the opportunity to connect with other people with a similar passion as me. Together, we went on to become friends and embrace that passion to dance in a different way. Currently, we have a K-pop dance group where we perform live at places like Siam, as well as have a YouTube channel with a current view total of 200,000. And that's, I'm proud of. Even though we didn't meet the beauty standards that we tirelessly sought for in the beginning, we created our own standards and strive for them in our own ways. And that leads me to my conclusion. Everyone is beautiful, and that means everyone can pave their own paths. Just like the ever-changing standards, beauty standards in history, the world is always changing. You do not have to go down the same path as everyone else. Sometimes doing the same things as other people have done before you might not work for you. So that means you have to either take a new path, find a different route, and you will still find the same levels of success. And one last thing that I would like all of you to take from this speech is this quote. Failure should be our teacher, not our undertaker. It is delay, not defeat. It is just a temporary detour, not a dead end street. Thank you.